will run over your neck. I will take your weave out, praise God. I will scratch up your car. I'm just crazy about Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you've been through what I've been through, you understand. I don't have nothing to lose. Glory to God. The stakes are high in the season, y'all. Yes, they are. You can't play the same games you used to play in the last season. Glory to God. It's too high right now. Glory to God. There's some things that are on the table. There's some matters in the courts of heaven that needs to be attended to. There are some, some strategic prayers that the saints of God have got to pray. Amen. You can't pray those weak, watered down, yeah. making God mad kind of prayers. You got to pray. Your prayer got to be effective. Yeah. That means it's got to work. Yeah. That means when I pray, I expect God to move. Yeah. And I don't even mind the devil move too. Come on, somebody. Amen. Devil, I bind you. But sometimes you need to see him move because that's the sign that God is moving. Yeah, but God just right. said, but Daniel prayed, the devil move too. Come on. Yeah. God, I'm going to stop praying every time I pray things go wrong. No, baby. That lets you know that your prayers is wrecking hell and you ought to keep on keeping yeah. on. Yeah. Every time I pray, something happens. Well, baby, keep praying. Praise God. We're not taking prisoners. King of heaven suffered violence, but the violent do what? Take it by force. Yeah. Hallelujah. Get delivered from that weak mindset, that cry baby, cry baby mindset, that woe is me. You got to you gotta come out of that. If you want to step into this thing, if you want to be called for the front line where God is, right now there is a, there's a, 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 what do you call it? When they, um, when they call for men to go to battle, what is that? That's not a draft. Crisis, but a draft. There's a draft now. And God is searching. Are you qualified? Come on. Are you qualified? <laughs> Y'all all right? Yes, ma'am. Isaiah 53. Online people, we love you so much. We bless God for y'all yes. online family. We just love you so much. Thank you for sharing our videos. Thank you to our new YouTube subscribers. Woo! Bless God for you getting that good word. We got over, I think, 700, 500 videos. I got nothing but word in me. I'm so pregnant, I don't know what to do. I'll preach to anything. My God. Stand still. They tell me I'm too long. I can't help it. It's just in me. Hallelujah. I can't let the rocks cry out for me. me. It's fine. Just shut up in my bones. Come on. Come on, somebody. I don't want nothing to on. Yeah. He said, you got to get me hot and cold. Hot and cold. Just stand still, but don't get in the middle. Yeah. And don't get in the way. Yeah, that's right. That's the word. Don't get in the way. Hey, hashtag. I said it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, our giving is down too. So just because we don't pause to give, y'all be mature to give. Get up, go to the bank, do your cash up, do your whatever. Right now, there's a need. There's two people that are in need right now. And I need about $3,000. And I believe it before 5 o'clock this afternoon, God's going to do it. All right. But y'all be to fight the time to bless you. I'm going to be right past that. Amen. 53. Somebody said Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah was the kind of prophet. I don't know if anybody would want to go to his church. Okay. I'm telling you, this man did not play. He did not play, praise God. He said, I want to reach out the whole thing, but I won't. But I want you to look at verse 3. He Ooh, said, Come on. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Wow. But look at verse 4. Sure. But surely. Sometimes folk will do you so wrong. They will. And they think that that thing that they did to you will just shut you down and shut you up. But despite all of what Jesus went through. And Isaiah was talking about Jesus. Sure. He still carried our sorrows. Can you still carry your stuff? When you feel like the world against, is against you? I'm going to read verse 3 again. He is despised and rejected. Come on, rejected people. You ain't got to say amen, but you know who I'm talking to. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just, I, I just don't know. How to, that's rejection. Yes, but you got to learn how to push past it. Everybody ain't going to accept you. You are not everybody's assignment. And come on, somebody. That's right. You are not for everybody. Everybody's not for you. Get amen. delivered from that. Well, wonder why I got a friend. That ain't your friend. Come on. It's okay. And it's really, it says, it's really okay. It's, it's really, really okay. okay. I, I promise. I know I'm your apostle. I may not be there. I don't have to be an apostle to you. You're not going to be everything to somebody. Be okay with that. Yeah. Rejection makes you feel like you got to be accepted by everybody. Everybody got to approve you. And how many you don't need that? That's right. No. 
Despite all of what Jesus experienced, according to what the prophet said in 53.3, surely he has borne our curse. He still carried his cross. Yeah. I don't know who the Holy Ghost is talking to today. You don't get a pass. I'm going to y'all that. Yeah. And he carried our sorrows. You mean to tell me as, as badly as I mistreated you, you are still willing to carry me in your womb, in your, in your bosom, in your prayer? Yes. Because I have the spirit of Christ and the mind of Christ. Yet we did not even esteem him stricken. There are folk you're interceding right now that don't even know you're interceding for them. Yeah. Yeah. They just walking around eating KFC and drinking Kool-Aid and you are on your knees waiting to get the throne out. And they are paying you no mind. Say, go with God anyway. Go with God anyway. Smitten of God and afflicted. He did that for you and for me, y'all. Yeah. If he paid the price, honey, you're going to have to pay yours too. That's right. So I said, but... But. He was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. Come on, somebody. You, you, you're going to have to pay the price for somebody. Some of you are going to carry your families. And they don't like you. They don't even believe in your God. Say amen to that. I'm being bruised for your iniquities. I'm fasting to get you set free. And the chastisement, the Bible said, of our peace was upon him, but by his stripes. Yes, come on. Come on, we are healed. Thank you, Lord. I release that over you today. By Jesus' stripes, you heal. healed. Well, apostle, my back don't hurt no more. But your mind is still jacked up. You're still thinking those toxic thoughts. You're still connected with folk that don't mean you're no good. You need your mind healed. You need your soul healed. You cry when you wake up. You cry when you go to the bathroom. You cry on 77, 85, and, and 16. You just cry because your soul, your spirit has been broken. But Jesus said, I was beaten for you to be healed. Yes. You don't have to live in sorrow no more. You don't have to live in, live in grief. No more. Yes, acknowledge what happened. I'm not telling you to forget it because a part of that is your story. My topic uh, for a little bit today is from wounded to warrior. Come on. From wounded to warrior. Come on, wounded to warrior. Now, I'm not talking to the folk who ain't never been through nothing. You can go ahead and come off the line right now if that's you. Y'all, this is your benediction if you ain't never been through nothing. But if you have ever gone through storms in your life, I want you to know there's a reason why. Yep. There's a reason why. I'm not saying God caused it, but he allowed it, and he's using it for his glory and for his purpose. Yes, and you wouldn't be a half of who you are right now had you not have gone through it. That's and right. the fact that you're still standing, worshiping, I heard you say the devil is defeated. Yep. God is exalted. But you, you was cast aside. You, you was rejected. Folks hate on you and try to push you and relegate you to the corner, but I see you lifting and praising God. You look like a warrior to me. You look like an overcomer. You look like a conqueror. You look like a weapon of mass destruction. You look like the bullets. You look like artillery. You look like the sword. You look like a battle axe. You look like somebody that God is drafting to send to the front line. Somebody say amen. Amen. I was called here for such a time as this. This is your finest hour. This is your time to shine. This is your time to arise and let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you a little bit about being wounded. Amen. Because we've all been wounded. We've all gone through things. Some of us are in a wounded place right now. Amen. But I want you to know that you can still function with wound. That's right. Hallelujah. And, and you should never curse your crisis because even though you didn't cause it, God can still use it. Can. I'm reminded about Joseph in the Bible. The Lord calls him a mighty man of God, a visionary, coat of many colors, dreamer, seer, the favorite of his father, and he went through H-E double hockey sticks. Yeah. Folks hanged on him that should have loved him. Mm. Folks tried to kill him that should have supported him. Yeah. Because if you really would have understood my assignment, you would have supported me. Yeah. If you understood that the reason God called me out and separated me is because there's a season of starvation coming upon the land and God raised me up to, 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 to sustain you. Some of the folks that's fighting against you don't even know that you're the one that God's going to use to preserve their life. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm not wounded, no, I'm a warrior. I'm not wounded, I'm a warrior. You know, there comes a time when you got to get past what they did. Yes. And I'm not saying you won't forgive because there's some lessons that you learn from that. And there's some places, if you put your hand on a hot stove, amen, you ain't going to forget that. You may have a little scar, a little burn, amen, for a minute. It'll heal up, but I guarantee you next time you go to cook them neck bones, you won't put your hand on that stove again. That's right. So sometimes pain will teach you what not to do. 
Amen. And so it's not meant to, to, to traumatize you. Well, I will never cook again. I will never eat pork and beans again. Honey, that was just yeah. one experience. Yeah. Don't build your life story around pain, praise God. Use the lesson from it. Use the, 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 the uh, assignment and the wisdom from it and go on. Yeah. So we're going to first acknowledge the pain that we have been hurt. It is a real thing. What I love about Jesus, when Lazarus died, the Bible said Jesus wept. Yeah. There are some of us that we have become so spiritual. <laughs> well, you know, I know God's got it. You know, you know, I'm a king. I'm, honey, but you ain't acting like no king. Okay. I'm a child of God, but you're not acting like a child of God. Mm. If that, Jesus acknowledged, I am hurting. Yeah. It is okay to let folk know or to tell God, Lord, I hurt. Yeah. He said, I thirst. Yeah. Right? He said, I'm hungry. He went to look for corn. He went into the fig tree, and the fig tree couldn't produce it. He cursed it. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging where you are hurting. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we had a saying back in the day, I bind that, or I, uh, um, what's the word? It is um, the devil is a liar, and he is a liar, but you're still hurting. Mm -hmm. He is a liar. Don't put those two things together. He is a liar, so I don't have to worry about that. No, your thing is real. What happened to you when you were eight years old was real. What happened to you in your mother's womb was real. What happened to you when you were 30 or at your job in your relationship? Somebody say it was real. It was the real. pain was real. I cried real tears. Yeah. Wasn't nothing fake about that. I groaned real groans. And my pillow was really wet. My phone was really dry. Yeah. My bank account was really in the negative. There's a point in time, yes, you are the call of God and the child of God, but you had better face the reality of where you are. I'm blessed and highly favored. Baby, you are bound. <laughs> and you're ignorant at the same time. The, 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 Lord, the Bible said Jesus wept when he heard the news. And he, and Jesus is the resurrection. Come on. That means you can know God is bringing you out. Yeah. And still have a human moment. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't tell good. me not to cry. That's yeah. good. Don't tell me you should have been over that by now. I'll never get my mom back on the surface. Yeah. Don't tell me it's going to be all right. There are some things that will never be all right. Come on, somebody. So I've got to learn how to be resilient. Yeah. I've got to learn how to stand. Yeah. I've got to learn. I was telling James yesterday, I said, you know, the reason why we travel a lot during our holidays is because during holiday season, we would gather as a family. Well, now the family cycle is broken, yeah. right? And so now why would I bind myself up? This is just wisdom. It ain't even in the Bible. It's just me talking. I know that that is an area of loss and grief. Yeah. Why would I sit still and just watch the clock? Well, at one o'clock, we, we had the crock pot on. By two o'clock, we put the news on. Why would I allow the enemy to have that kind of room in my mind when I can go to God in prayer and say, Lord, I need a strategy to overcome Thanksgiving or whatever your thing is. There are certain seasons in your life where you are triggered with your anointed self. So you can't sit back and let that day dominate you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Right. Teach me how to rejoice on so-and-so's birthday, on so-and-so's anniversary. That's good. Teach me, God. Give me strategies. And so the strategy the Holy Spirit gave me, he said, pack up and go. Uh -huh. Go and sit at a restaurant. Don't even worry about pulling the pot out. Don't even worry because you know that's mama pot and that's daddy's favorite song. Yes. So, and that's, you got to yes. strategize. you got to save yourself. Yeah. So you can let come, you gotta come out of being wounded. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. Ain't nothing happy about Thanksgiving. Ooh. Merry Christmas. Ain't nothing merry about Christmas. Because that reminds you of the way things used to be. And instead of you glorifying God, and I'm not in the holidays, you ain't gotta celebrate if you don't. I'm, just, I'm talking about me. Right. Instead of you allowing that day to, to dominate you, and you're in the room, lights off, you don't wanna talk to nobody, you crying, curled up, but you a king. Woo. You are king. You, you're supposed to cast out devils and you're supposed to command angel armies and you're supposed to speak life. You're supposed to raise the dead, but you can't get up. Wow. Somebody said, from wounded to warrior. From wounded to warrior. Come on, somebody. That means you got to go to God in prayer. Somebody said, I got to go to God. I gotta go to and God. I first got to tell him what's wrong. That's right. Tell Went him. to my doctor the other day. I said, hey, this is what I need. This is what's going on. 
Amen. Now I'm gonna fire him. I'm gonna let you know I'm gonna get fire him. Praise God. It's time to move on. Amen. Some of the nonsense. Praise God. You've been my doctor for 15 years. Some you should be telling me. You, you're not reading my file? Come on, this is my life. Come on. This is my destiny. You're supposed to be my primary care physician. They're primary care for me. I ain't went to no medical school. I don't know what this means. That's right. Come on, somebody. This is my life. Take control of your life. Yeah. Well, I've been going to Dr. Sonzo for 50 years. Well, how have you progressed? That's right. Somebody say shift. Shift. You don't have to stay where you're stuck. That's right. Stay where you're <laughs> stuck. Shift. You have shift. That's good. And it's okay to fire people. It's your It is really all right. <laughs> that just, and I'm not firing you as a physician. And I'm not touching your practice. But us. We are done. Over. Come on. When you know what you carry, I don't want nothing connected to me that's asking me questions that you should have the answers to. That means, baby, you ain't it. You ain't it. Period. You were fine for the season where I didn't have all of this connected to me. Yeah. Now the stakes are high. Either you come up or you get out. Come up or get out. That's good. And I think he's wonderful. And if you need a referral, no. <laughs> you just talked all that time. Because separating from people doesn't mean I have to do you harm. That's right. I'm not going to get on Yelp and put out a bad review. I don't do that. Oh, I do. That was different. That was a mess. But I'm not going to go on social media and blast you. Come on, because just because we disconnect doesn't mean I have an assignment to expose you. Yep, it's not no problem. That ain't, that ain't my circus, I ain't my mom. Well, what they did ain't, what, that was between me and him. You exactly. and I have that experience. Exactly. You may have a wonderful relationship with them. It's just me. Exactly. So don't try to lump me in your boat. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Just because you had a bad experience, baby, I'm sorry you went through that, but honey, we get along just fine. Just fine. Just fine. So don't recruit, I don't know what I'm talking to, but don't recruit people Ooh. just because it's time for you to disconnect. Have your own experience. But yeah, I'm going to fire him, praise God. I'm going to think about firing my dentist too. Good. Good. Amen. Good. God has given us choices. Hello. And my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sure. And I didn't realize that until October last year. The Lord said, get your house in order. Mm. He said, get your house in order. Y'all remember Hezekiah? Yeah. The Lord said, get your house in order. When God tell you, get your house in order, get your house, house in order. order. Honey, get your labs, get your, eat your, your, your leafy greens. You got to do what God say do. Right. Because he loves you enough to let you know there's an assignment of premature death about to take you out. Right. Now keep on with that bacon and Pepsi. Right. Right. I will welcome you home, but you're going to have a whole backpack of stuff that I told you to do before you Jesus. close your eyes. Jesus. But you love bacon. Yeah. Ooh, you, you got 12 bacon. books in you, but you eat bacon. Yeah. <laughs> y'all yeah, quiet. Yeah, that's true. You got all this yeah, ministry and stuff in you. You got all these agencies, and, but, but you're drinking soda every day. You don't, don't, water don't come nowhere near you. Oh, Jesus, I'm scared of you. Hello? <laughs> God, I come against infirmities. No. Come against some sodas. <laughs> come against some sodas. <laughs> Father, forgive us for the weak use of your strength. God is not ignorant. That's right. Yes, Lord. I ain't got this prayer answer because you lie. Ooh, Lord. Call it for what it is. Lord, I am addicted to this. Ouch. And it is what the T.I. is. Yep. I like this a whole lot. Take the taste away from me. Take the temptation, God. And then you know what happens. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm going with God. Come on. Do you know what happens when you pray that prayer? People are going to offer the same thing to you. You're trying to get away from it. <laughs> you ain't wrong. Check this out, Dr. Tracy. I tell the truth and no lie because I fear God. In my office, I have cases of sodas. Mm -hmm. I got Sprite. Okay. I got Coke and probably some other stuff. It's just sitting there like, like, some age, somebody donated it to my department and they put it in my office. Wow. wow. Temptation. Come on. God. So now we're moving. I'm, I'm in the office packing up. And you hear that thing calling. Don't you know you need something Ooh. cold and crispy to drink? <laughs> Come on, something to give you that burn, boy. Oh Because some of our wounds are self 
conflict. That's right. Some of that stuff we did, God told you not to do that. Yeah. And then you go, God, I thank you for grace and mercy. God said, okay, I got grace and mercy. Ooh, I got it. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me. God said, surely it ain't. <laughs> I got something that's going to follow you. It's called consequence. Oh my and repercussions. Yeah. Enjoy. And some of us are trying to do warfare over a harvest that you forgot that you sowed. My God. Say amen, amen. Amen. So Jesus understood I am hurting. This man was my friend. And even though he knew, he knew the human divine God side of him knew I'm going to go raise him up. But he touched his emotions. Mm-hmm. And I don't care how spiritual you are. You need to stay in touch with your emotions. Yes. I'm afraid of folk mm-hmm. that don't touch their emotions. Yeah. Because you can never understand what I go through. Yeah. You can never, if I have a moment, you don't have the mercy for me. At, honey, I don't know what you're getting from that. Let me, just because your emotions are robbed and raped. Mm-hmm. Honey, let me cry. Let me cry. Let, 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 me, let me weep over this thing. And so the Bible said Jesus wept knowing full well it was going to be resurrected. In other words, you were gonna, you're going to have experiences in your life where you want to grieve the loss of a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even knowing God's got something better on the way. <laughs> you know, I know what's coming, but God, I'm, I'm right yeah. here, right now. Okay. You gotta be honest with your right here, right now. I know better is to come, but I ain't in that better yet. Yeah. Right now, I'm in bitter. I'm trying to get out of this, and I'm gonna keep going to God, and keep going to God, and keep going to God, and I'm gonna keep bringing Him my wound until it doesn't hurt me no more. Well, a woman out God, how do you know it doesn't hurt when you can talk about it yeah. and you don't cry? Yeah, that's the test right there. How do you know you're healed when you can touch it and it doesn't that's hurt and it ain't tender no more? Yeah. Woo. That's it. Wow. The minute somebody say it and you manifest, go yes. back go to back the altar. Okay. And I don't mean here. Because yeah. we bring some here because we don't have an altar at home. Yeah. That's the and the, the Lord told me years ago, he said the corporate altar contaminated because there are no altars at home. And we wait and let the devil wear us out all week long. I can't wait to get to church. I'm going to put a praise on it. Baby, you should have been praising him Monday morning. Exactly. You should have been praising him Tuesday. Don't wait till you get here because you may not make it. So there are things we bring to the corporate altar that should not be because we don't have our own private altars at home. And when I say private altars, listen to some of, me, some of my religious people that I love so much. It doesn't mean you gotta have a whole closet with white sheets and your Juanita Bonham music and, and album covers and your talib and all your oils. Wow, you can be sitting on your toilet on. with some incense burning yeah. and there is a smoke offering yeah. going up before the Lord. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. You don't have, if you got it, I'm not knocking you. The movie War Room was amazing. And a lot of folk actually found space. And yeah, I think that's amazing. I think it's wonderful. I love all the pictures on Pinterest. But I'm saying to you, if you don't have that, yeah. wherever you are, you can build an altar. And you can you can sacrifice your stuff, the things that you're dealing with, the things that you're going through, right there. Some people's in the kitchen. My kitchen, I got a bathroom and a kitchen altar. When I'm in the kitchen and I'm cleaning, it's so therapeutic for me. Yeah. And so, because when I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. Yeah. When the water is running, the water is running. Right. Come on. Come on, somebody. And so, it's, and then, I, y'all have been mopping like crazy. I, I'm buying all kinds. Of, now, I moved to mop, and I'm mopping. I love I'm just, mopping I, I just love, it's therapeutic. It's healing for me. Now, some of y'all, that may not be a thing. Like, I wish I would pick up a mop talking about therapy. That just bound me up. I ain't trying to clean up nothing. I'm just saying, that's me. You got to find your thing. What I'm saying is, wherever you have designated and separated and called out for a place for you to meet God, that's your altar. Everybody all right? So Jesus understood that even though I'm hurting, even though I know I'm going to call this man back to life, I know that. You know that some of the things that you're grieving over, you know God's got something better because that's the kind of God you serve. By this time, you should know your God. If you don't get another prophetic word, you should know God's going to work it out. Because that's what's in his word. I know the thoughts I have for you. I know that no one before me you shall prosper. I know that count the count on God. You know God's going to provide for you. So you in the furnace right now, but let it burn, baby. Let it burn. let it burn everything in you that needs to be released so you can move on to your next season. Don't try to avoid it. Let whatever when Jesus wept, the tears fell, let them fall. Quit trying to interrupt God's healing process. You serve 
come and God said, stand here and, and, and start naked. But Lord, let me, no, no, stand still and let me get a hold of it. But Lord, stand still. But Lord, no, 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 stand still. So you can what? See the salvation. Why don't you see salvation? Because you ain't still. Segway. Yesterday I saw this movie. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me in my folly. The name of the movie is A Quiet Place. Now, I'm not telling y'all to go watch it. It's not for everybody. Amen. Some people can eat herbs. Some people can eat meat. Stay where you at. Okay? Huh? Yes. You definitely. Don't do Boy, I've jumped so many times. Good God Almighty. But the name of the movie is A Quiet Place too. I didn't even see Quiet Place 1, so I was really set up. I had no idea. And I tried to look at the movie trailer, and it tricked me. Because in, with the movie trailer, it looked like there was a whole lot of action. And it did to a certain degree. But see, the way that I'm wired, I can't sit still. for like, Y'all should know this if you know me. I don't sit still. I don't, that ain't me. That is never me. Y'all have to make me sit down. And even then, it's a fight. Yes. So, so if there's nothing going on in my mind, is not actively engaged, it shuts off. Yeah, that's it. And I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not my collective. I'm just saying you're not engaging. I'm awake, though. Eventually. Eventually. I hear myself snore, wake up and look around and wonder did anybody else hear me? We did. I did. Praise God. Anyway, with this movie now, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to. Uh -huh. So in this movie, it was this girl, I think her name is Lupita. She was the um the Wakanda girl, right? Or whatever. And and so in this movie, she had like stage four cancer. She was in hospice or what have you. And and she had this cat. Oh Lord, well, Jesus the cat. And and so, but she went, they went to see a movie. She was she was putting these pain patches on and she was in pain. She said, you know, every muscle in my body is on fire or what have you. If you're in that, you know exactly what that means. But so the nurse took her to the show downtown New York, and so in the middle of the show, things started to shift. Helicopters and fire and all this stuff. And so what happened was the earth was on, went under attack by some kind of alien force or, or whatever the situation was. And so to make a long story short, listen, the aliens or whatever they call were attracted to noise. So that's why it's called a quiet place. It's the only way that the enemy can find you is if you're quiet. Wow. Wow. Jesus. Wow. 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 Okay. That's a word. That prophet, that's a word. <laughs> the prophet was like, woo, this is just so full of revelation. <laughs> so, so now they're running. And they didn't figure out, they had to figure it out, you know what I'm saying, by trial and error. You know, because nobody said, hey, be quiet, these aliens are finding you. So yeah. some things you got to find out by trial and error by going through experience. And so now they get real quiet and they notice that when they get quiet, the aliens run past them. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, cool, we got it. This is how we preserve our life. We just be quiet. And so everybody's quiet. And then that's where I kind of goes off because I'm like, I need y'all to talk. I need somebody to do something. Right. Like, I'm getting quiet with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not supposed to happen. I, I need somebody to move, scream. I need something to cat or to move so I can get back engaged with the movie or what happened. But anyway, this woman, she was in stage four cancer. Somebody said she was wounded. She was literally, wounded. Literally, literally wounded, yeah. right? And, and she had these, you know, her uh, patches or whatever. The cat was her, her um, service animal. And so she, there was a drive in her oh, to make it to some pizzeria place. Because she knew she was on her way out, but she wanted to go back to this pizzeria place. And so now everybody is hiding out and quiet. And she tells her nurse, I'm going to get some pizza. Okay, pizza. And he was like, what? You want? And she went. And this woman, she, she, she endured being pounded, being stepped on, but she watched because she understood the rules of engagement. She knew that I can move strategically even though we're under attack if I just be quiet. Oh, God. Oh, God. And so listen, she's moving and she's crawling up. Now listen, didn't I say she's a cancer patient stage four? Yeah. Come on, somebody. She did not let her pain stop her from her purpose. She knew that I, before I closed my eyes to this light, I'm going to go back the place that brought me joy. I'm going back. Yeah. Remember what Jesus said before the joy that was set before me? Some of you, amen, things may not look uh, bleak, may not look right for you now, but for the joy, yeah. for the vision, for the end goal, if you know what God promised you, honey, I know I can't yeah. die here until I get to that. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to make it to the pizza place. Yeah. And that was her goal. And so along the way, people try to connect with her and she told one guy, you cannot go with me. Ah, period. He was a distraction. Ah. He kept making noise, and she would look at him and say, I told you not to come with me. And she was like, go back, go back. And he said, please let me go. I promise you I'll be quiet. Call on somebody. And, she, and he became a liability. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Boy. Be a 
folk, you're trying to get someplace in God. You're trying to get to that distant place. And niggas coming along with that coming along self. Making noise. I'm in survival. I am fighting for my life. If I make the wrong move, the wrong sound, I could die here. Yeah. It ain't even my time yet. And here you come, can I follow you? No. But he kept on being persistent. And so finally she developed this heart of compassion for him. And it reminded me of Abraham a lot, y'all, like never before. And, and, and she took him with her. And she had to keep rescuing him. Why? Because he didn't have the survival skills that she had. See, when you in that stage and of your life, praise God, and you dealing with pain all the time, somebody, that's what makes you so strong. You're so used to dealing with pain. When you see up, go through stuff, you're like, baby, you want to make it. It's going to be all right. Hold your head. Be encouraged. Why? Because I've lived through pain. But this cat had, well, Joseph had never been through nothing. So every time he tripped and, and cut his hand out, and, and so this is why some of you got has allowed you to go through so many painful experiences so you don't stop and cry every time you punch, yes. punch your toe. Amen. How do you strong with the Lord and the power of his might? Yes. And can't nobody take that from you. Well, why are you so strong? Because I done died five times. Why are you so strong? Because everybody left me. I had to figure out. There has to be something that drives you if you're going to go from wounded to warrior. You got to have a purpose. Jesus said the foxes have holes. I don't have nowhere to lay my head, but I'm going to keep pressing. Money all jacked up. I'm going to keep praising him. Family acting crazy. I'm going to keep worshiping. Because this is not the end. And you don't put a period where God put a comma. So she had to continue rescuing this man. He would just go out, or he wasn't looking, wasn't vigilant. Now, with what she had gone through, she's hypersensitive. Some of you are hyper, you know, oh, oh baby, I feel something in the room, the atmosphere shifting. Yeah. And the rest of the folks, what do you mean? She's nice, baby, that's a whole thing. Oh, oh, honey, yes, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> Because some things make you hypersensitive. Yeah. If you had to fight with witches and warlocks all your life, baby, you know the one is coughing out there, the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. With COVID, if anybody sees, what? You, you became hypersensitive because yeah. people were dying, right? You became hypersensitive because you were in survival. We were in survival. And it could have just been allergies. Don't you have them? You better get some Zyrtec. Don't you sniffle. Don't you sneeze. Yeah. Yeah. Round here. Suck it up. <laughs> Go outside with it. Y'all know you be on the plane. Stop the plane. Hey, go ahead with all that. Right? So when you go through things, it makes you hypersensitive. Yes. Honey, you ain't tip throwing to through the tulips, baby. You watch it. Yeah. Because I know what pain look like, and I'm not about to put myself in that, and I ain't going to let you put me in that. Amen. Folks that have gone through pain, honey, they will cut your face off. They're like, I don't play that. Don't come here with that mess. I have been through too much. I don't play that. Don't play with me. When you, because you, you understand the rules of engagement and you know what you've been through and you also know what it took you to get out of it. Yes. Joseph understood, look here, it took me all these years. I missed my whole childhood. I missed my whole everything. Trying to be molded and shaped by God. I was accused of rape. I was left to the side. I was left in jail. And so when it's time to seize the throne, Pharaoh, I ain't playing with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you find no plan, oh, honey, you ain't serious. And you are dangerous to me. Dangerous. Because if you play with your destiny, dog gone, you'll try to play on mine. Stakes are too high. That's right. I'm not telling you to go around cutting people off. So uh, what I am telling uh, you to do is to set people where they belong. That's with me. Jesus had three, twelve, seventy multitudes. Mm -hmm. Everybody in your twelve. Mm -hmm. Everybody in your three. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you in a circle. No, baby, you can't get my answer. You, you ain't even honey. Praise God. We will see you in the 70. Right? Because there are things that I can share in the three. I can't share with the That's 12 right. the 70. That's you don't right. have the mind to understand that. Let us not be this. You don't have the spiritual understanding. That's why when Jesus went up, Peter was talking and God said, tell him to shut up. I mean. You made it here by the grace of God with yourself. Be quiet. Be quiet. So you can stay here. <laughs> Somebody say from wounded to warrior. From wounded to warrior. So anyway, the, the man attached himself to her. 
and follow her. And she said, I'm trying to get to some peace. I just want peace. He was like, what? I'm going to go with you. And so he attached himself with her. And he went through a lot of trials and tribulations and what have you. She had to save his life so many times. I lost count. Amen. And then in the end, in the end, she made the ultimate sacrifice. Because she knew her time was short. She made it to the peace of Harlem. And what was so good about the pizza parlor is it was a place where she and her dad, he, her dad was a musician. That was uh, like, okay, God, you're trying to mess me up, you're tricking me, and then you have to try and move the council. And, and, but there was, that was a place where her dad used to play music. And so she went back to reconnect her home base. And at that point, it was like, that's all I wanted. Yeah. And she found a way to get that man to safety. Now check this out. This messed me up too. The demons had full invasion of the earth. And if you make noise, they're coming to get you. Uh, they're going to come get you. The only, the, the only uh, you can hear the emergency airwaves saying it's an evacuation, so, so, so. And the, the, the medical responder said, get to water. Because these animals cannot swim. Mm. I said, there was a prophet on that team, a writer. So the only place that the folks could be saved was on the water. So everybody was trying to evacuate to get to the water. Because wow. demons, and you would see the demons were pursuing them. And as soon as they got to the water, they stopped. Mm. There yet yeah. remains Come on. a place of safety yeah. where the wicked one is yeah. God, touches not. you not. But you yeah. gotta get to that place of safety. You gotta stay under the hedge of protection. You gotta stay in the ark of safety. You gotta stay in the will of God. If not, even though salvation has been released, you don't get it because you're in the wrong yep. place. She got him to the water. She sacrificed herself. She said, go. And she, at that point, she made noise and drew attention to herself so that he could end the camp, made it to the boat. Oh, the cat. Good movie. Again, if you can handle it, handle it not, praise God. That's that. So that somebody said, from wounded to warrior. From wounded to warrior. Warrior yeah. for you. So God, in, the, in Psalms 18, the Bible says how the Lord will set us on high and he give us feet like hind feet, right? In other words, God will equip you and he has equipped you. To survive. Like whatever it is that you're going through, survival is, is, is an innate part of you making it. Why? Because God never designed for you to die in your trial. He never designed for you to die in your test, to die in your storm. And so for everything that comes your way, God, I said it last week or week before last, he gives you a way of escape. Yeah. Right? And, and so when, 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 when you are, are going through, God will say, listen to this message. Let it encourage you. Sing this song. Let it soothe you. Go to this, listen to his YouTube. Let it minister to you. Like there are strategies that God will give you to keep you alive. Yeah. Come on, to keep you to the point where you can float above surface until you're able to swim on your own. He's not just going to leave you out here. Even though Joseph didn't have much friends, but that butler and cup there in the jail became a source of inspiration. And you know what they did? They kept his prophetic gift sharp. Because God was dealing with them in dreams and they were telling him about it. And so God said, yeah, you may be going through, but I'm going to keep your gifts stirred up. Because I can't allow, here's what we do. When our trials come, we lay everything down. Mm. Well, I can't sing no more, you're not going through. Honey, some of the best songs yeah. you will ever sing. Some of my most heartfelt worship was when I felt like God was ripping me and stripping me. Yeah. Some of the most powerful sermons I've ever preached was when all hell was breaking loose. Because you don't have nothing else to lose. Right. And you become a, burnt, a a living sacrifice. God, you become a drink offering. God, I give you everything. Yes. I take it all, have it all. You can have it. Just to apprehend his glory. Just to apprehend the strength that you need to endure in this season. Yeah. So I don't know who needed to hear this word today. We all have wounds. Isaiah talked about it. Jesus had wounds that weren't even his. He picked up our stuff. Some of you are carrying wounds that belong to other people. Some of you are carrying wounds you inflicted God told you not to do. It. Did it anyway with your wonderful self. Now the Bible said, he said, endure it patiently as you're being buffeted for your own faults. That's why we got to have conversations with God in prayer. Not here. We touch the river with you and we ask God to help me. With, but there's some things in prayer that may take you all night long. Baby. We got all night for you. Yep. We love you though. There's some things you got to lay down and, and, and prostrate and, and, and wrap yourself up in the love of God, in the word of God, and say, God, what a wretched man that I am. God, all this pain, all this heartache, God, I cannot and I will not continue on like this. I know you didn't bring me here to leave me. I know this is not all you have for me. You said 
that you are the lifter up of my head. Lord God, right now I'm hung down. Yeah. We're going to have to have some conversations with you. So that you can emerge from being wounded. And you may still have scars. That just shows you I survived it. Yeah. That's all that is. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed of my scars. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to do that. That's my scar. Jesus said, go ahead and touch me. I went through that for you. Yeah. I survived it for you. Don't be ashamed of your testimony because your testimony is going to help somebody else overcome. Yeah. Folk need to know that God is still healing. Yeah. They need to know that God is still uniting families. Yeah. They need to know that God is still making ways out of nowhere. Yeah. Let us rise on our feet, amen. How many know that we serve a loving God? Yes, we do. He loves you. Say that he loves me. He loves me. He, say it like you mean it. He uh, loves me. You may not have anybody in your personal life to say I love you, but I'm telling you today, God said I love you. And I will move the world for you. I will move people out of your life and I'll move folk into your life. I will open doors for you and make ways in the desert. So Father, here it is that we come. As we thank you for the ministering of your word this afternoon, God, we're wounded to warrior. Father, thank you, Lord God, that there is a help for your people. And there should not be a casting down without a lifting up. You said, behold, I will tear this temple down, but in three days I will rebuild. God, there are areas in our life that we have been torn down in. Torn down. And God, all we see is rubble and ashes and heaps of trash. You ask Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? It was a hypothetical question, theoretical, because you knew the answer, God. But you needed him to acknowledge that there is a graveyard here. Some of us can't receive resurrection because we refuse to acknowledge what's died. We are entertaining corpses. We've been bone stuff, trying to make it look like it's alive, and it's over. It has expired. It is time to bury it and move on. So God, today for every dead situation, every graveyard in our life, career-wise, relationship-wise, ministry-wise, health-wise, in the name of Jesus, can these bones live? Yes, Lord. If you say they can, yes, they can. And you stood at the mouth of that grave and you said, Lazarus, come forth. You didn't say come forth because everything behind the tomb would have come out. And truth be told, there are some things that need to remain right where they are. There are some phone calls that should never be returned. There are some friend requests that should never be honored. Leave it behind the tomb. But you call Lazarus' name specifically. And so God, as we stand in the front of our graveyard situations, we're going to call those things that you do want to live. We're going to call them back to life. Missed opportunities. Hopes that have been deferred. Were things that we felt we would never experience it again. God, you are God. It ain't over until God says that it's over. And God ain't said it's over. Our circumstances have lied to us far too long. It is time to rise up now. It is time to take hold of shield and buckler. It is time now to stand and have a good all to stand. Father, bless this word in our hearts. Let us share it with those that we know are struggling right now. Some are so bound up, God. You told them again to go to church, and the devil sat on them, God. And Father, the enemy allowed them to miss out on the impartation. Touch them right now where they are. There's a time to sit down, and there's a time to stand up and go. This is a season to shake ourselves, to stand up and go. And we're not just going for ourselves, but our people need to see us go. Our daughters need to see us go. Our sons need to see us go. Our cousins need to see us stand. For we are the example. We are the Bible. Some of them will never read. Father, we bless you. We love you. We give you your name the praise. It is in Jesus.